phase of a sinusoidal function. The Taylor series expansion of exponential function is uh, given like that. But even though we do not know the Taylor series expansion, the six series expansion formula derives directly from the definition of Euler number. The Euler number E, this notation is introduced by Euler. However, it was first introduced by Bernoulli. So everybody is a physicist. At that time, physicist, mathematician, there was a, they were the same. And the, even they were philosopher. You you do not you did not know that Descartes created the Cartesian coordinates to simplify geometry from Euclidean geometry as solvable using algebra because of the introduction of the Cartesian coordinate system. And Cartesian coordinate system comes from direct from the computation of the scalar product that the magnitude of two vector multiplied by cosine theta. This is the most important part of the algebraic geometry and that exceeds the ability of the, the Euclid, original Euclidean way. So using this algebra, the geometry, geometry becomes algebra. So that is a very, very simple to uh, verify this kind of expressions. Anyway, we turn to E and from the definition of E, we attach X and then expand using binomial theorem. And in the limit as n goes to infinity, we found that this series is right. This very interesting function has the derivative, the result is itself. So this is the most, the, this is the simplest function. This y equals x looks simple. It is not simple. This is the simplest function. Although it has infinite number of terms, the derivative is the same. If the derivative is the same, the inverse transformation, that is the integral, is also the same. Everything is the same. So this is the, the simplest function in mathematics. And why we study this? Because it comes from the equation of motion the Newton's law of motion. Mathematicians can solve the quadratic equation. They can find the solution of this, but who made this? Nature, nature gives us the property that satisfies this kind of relation. So once you write down the equation, then you solve using mathematical way, but the problem is that how can you find the nat nature shows this kind of structure? Write down, writing down the equation is a most important part and mathematics is to solve this solution. And then you need to apply the mathematical solution in reality. So that is the product of the engineering and, and so on. So if you, if you study only mathematics, then you are not able to learn how to construct, why you need to solve this kind of equation, why these kind of equation exist, something like that. So that is the most important part and mathematical tool should be developed if it is really necessary. This kind of function is a very simple because the equation of motion, for example, harmonic oscillator is one of the simplest equation. This is the origin of the exponential function. Exponential function was developed to solve the equation of motion 
that was generated by physics problem. You need to remember. Anyway, let us return to the exponential function. And from middle school, perhaps from elementary school, you know law of exponent. And any number, even though they, the elementary school student do not know the what e is. However, for example, they know two is two times two is two to the second. So the power law one plus one equals two. Can I apply this one to the any arbitrary power? Sure. If the base, these are the base, base. If we have a common base, powers are sum because this is a repeated multiplication. So this is the abbreviation for multiplying two twice, three times, then you, you put three, something like that. So why don't we generalize this idea to compute, to, to check if the power law or the law of exponent holds for this number E, Euler's number. We introduce this one by expanding the about one plus one over n to the nth power, taking the limit to the n goes to infinity and applied binomial theorem. I can express exponential function in this manner. The extension, uh, the first of all, we, we were able to find this one with a real number but as soon as uh, i obtain this this is true for the complex number two it is a uh, very interesting this is defined not only for the real number but also for any complex number this kind of extension for real number to complex number is called analytic continuation. So in most cases, the most important part is that the polynomial exponential function and exponential function can be decomposed into sine and cosine or sine hyperbole and cosine hyperbole. This pair linear combination will give this, will give this. But we know e to the i x is cosine x plus i sine x. This is called the Euler's formula. This shows this one is a linear combination of sine and cosine with coefficient, a complex coefficients. From this, we can imagine we could extend this idea to arbitrary complex number. That is the question. However, this simple algebraic sum will give us a very simple result that it is true. It can be extended to arbitrary complex number using this simple addition. Addition of what? This power series. Suppose that we have two exponential functions. They are summed according to this summation rule. We multiply. This is composed of 1 plus z plus z squared and so on, multiplied by 1 plus w plus and so on. We need to expand the arbitrary number, infinite number of terms. However, this summation notation is quite useful. We put this summation notation and multiply these two. Everybody knows that these two can be multiplied in this manner. However, we need to be careful about the summation of the, these two terms. By the way, I like what I like to do is we keep using binomial theorem. This is a very, very useful. Why don't we introduce new summation? Okay, we have P and Q 
there used to be factorials in the denominator. So what I'm doing is that I need to multiply one that is usually used in both mathematics and physics. It is a kind of conversion factor. Conversion factor is nothing but unity. You multiply one, but reorganize one to be R factorial divided by R. And why don't we sum this one? Both of them goes to infinity. Here, P runs from zero to R and R runs to zero to infinity. This is the reorganizing the counting the numbers on the, we, we have a table of along X and Y plane. This summation is uh, something like from this at the end of the day and these and these and these and these and th this kind of summation, tedious summation. But this summation is a summation of all points. However, keeping this kind of way, I don't miss anything. So we convert this kind of tedious summation into a different way, sum this way. And this runs from r equals to 0, r equals 1, r equals 2, and so on. So in such a manner, I can cover all possible combination of this expansion. So the result is like that. But you are very, very familiar with the summation for this product. This is nothing but z plus w's are the power. So using that formula, we return to the original form of the exponential functions of power series expansion. As a result, I can find this. Why is it why it is so powerful? Because I can I know what this is, right? By making use of sum by substituting z equals i x, and that they can be separated into even even terms and odd terms, and even terms will give the cosine and odd terms will give sign. And then I multiply. So why don't we replace this one by this? Then if I multiply this guy, what I have done is I can combine the powers. This is power, the law of exponent that is applicable to the exponential, arbitrary exponential function. So I was able to complete the analytic continuation from the real variable space to arbitrary complex number. It is a very, very powerful. So arbitrary complex number can be attached as a power of an Euler number to generate this kind of most general form. So we call this an Euler's formula. We know how to derive this by power series expansion. That's fine. And using this, I can reproduce the addition formula for the sinusoidal function. How? I know what it is. This is cosine theta plus i sine theta, substitute alpha and beta in here. So product of two, two is, uh, we know i equals the square root of minus one, so i square equals minus one. Therefore, what I get is blah, 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 blah. But before we expand this, what I can do is uh, using law of exponent, just add them up. Oh, uh -huh. use the definition. We have checked this. 
So substitute this alpha plus beta in here. And then we make a tedious expansion of this product, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, but I squared is minus one. We have negative sine on it. What is the imaginary part, the cosine, sine, and sine, cosine? In these two terms, we have a single I. As a result, I can compare these two. The real part must be the same as this, and imaginary part must be the same as this. Therefore, we conclude that the addition formula of cosine and sine is automatically generated from the law, of, the power law of exponent. <clears throat> so any linear combination of two sine functions of an equal period with an arbitrary phase difference is another sinusoidal function with the same period. Okay, why don't we rescale this problem into the redefine this as a real number this is a, nothing but the shift of the origin to another point and, and then rescale, rescale unity to arbitrarily so resize the scale 0, 1 by transforming 1 in here, magnification or something like that. So once I redefine this, what I get is we have the same same period. This phase has been shifted. What is the difference? Beta minus alpha. Okay, that's it. So we introduce the difference phi, that is a phase difference between the two arguments. So usually, sine this phi, sine c plus phi is by making use of this formula cosine sine sine cosine we substitute it, this one in here expand this and this is the original term of the first y1 and then we arrive at some constant sine constant cosine in this expansion i don't have this phase anymore so we we reorganize this summation combine two signs and keep the singles cosine term this a and b can be rescaled by taking the square root of the sum, then we will find the two coefficients. If you square this, square this, and sum them all, you arrive at unity. So squared x squared plus y squared equals one. You can always parameterize these numbers as cosine and sine. As a result, this one can always express as a single sine or single cosine. This is the result, two wave of equal period or equal wavelength, regardless of the phase difference between the two waves. If I add them all, we have the same wave with some phase. That phase is determined like that. Okay.